Welcome back. Your Hamilton Tiger Cats are seeking their first road win of the season as they face the Elks in Commonwealth Stadium in just a couple of minutes. Folks, you are listening to Tiger Cats pregame presented by Greenworks. Greenworks Tools is kicking off your lawn care season with all the outdoor power you need. Tackle any chore like the pros by visiting us at Greenworks Tools. Dot com. And folks, with his thoughts on tonight's tilt is longtime Tiger Cats coach and broadcaster John Salavanis with a little something we like to call his pregame salutations. Let's open up the microphone. And Coach Sal, certainly thank you for checking in with us as always. Well, it's good to be with you, Bubba and Andy. Uh, you know, and Andy, Andy hit right on it, Bubba. Was, he was talking about the need to build on what they did last week. You know, they're starting to show signs, the beginnings of a team identity. Uh, the offense was more balanced. They controlled the clock. They only had three two-and-outs, and they didn't have any two-and-outs in the uh, second half. Uh, they distributed the ball to seven different receivers. Uh, only two passes went for 20-plus yards. So you know, that's the beginning of an offense with running back Butler. He touched the ball 19 times for 80 yards. You know, now they lead the CFL in time of possession, 32.28 minutes uh, a game. So they're beginning to build on what they uh, did last week uh, and continue to do tonight in Edmonton. Coach, I think you nailed it there. You talked about James Butler getting it, getting him involved. He, he leads the CFL with 24 missed tackles on the season. Uh, seems to be good things happen when he touches the ball. You mentioned the... The, the two and outs, the improvement in that game to game, um, points off turnovers. They did have the Ticats did give up the ball three times last week, but no points off turnovers, which is much different than the uh, 45 points that they've given up <laughs> off turnovers so far this so far this season. Uh, and they're starting to get to the quarterback, um, but you could say that I'm both sides of the, of the game tonight. Hamilton had five sacks last week. Edmonton had four sacks last week. So I think that's a stat to keep an eye on for tonight as well. Uh, and, and you mentioned uh, the balanced offense. I thought the 27 rush attempts last week is a great way to dictate the flow of the game and control the clock. Yeah, you're right, Andy. And all of the things that you mentioned, uh, to me, the most telling one was the defense didn't allow any points after those turnovers, you know, and then the D picked off three passes of their own and they held the running backs uh, for uh, the Red Blacks in check, uh, 45 yards on 16 carries. So all in all, you know, the uh, the complimentary football is starting to show up. You know, Coach, we talked about this and I sort of teed it up in the last uh, block the short week of preparation for the players. Andy answered the question on how you talk, uh, and he talked about taking care of the body, and that's important for the players as you make the travel out west and, again, with that short week of preparation. But what about the coaches? I mean, it's a whole new or maybe a completely different game plan. How, how do they adjust on such a short timeline? Well, the adjustments that they make, of course, the, the filming uh, process was done well in advance probably even of the Red Blacks game, the breakdowns that the coaches do. So they have all of that in their arsenal. To me, what they've got to be able to do as coaches is, is don't get too wild in what you're trying to do. Do what you do and do it well. Those, those are the ways you win ball games. You know, and, and when you get into a place where uh, you can show some improvement, uh, especially in that red zone, as Andy said before, you know, maybe come up with a, a different scheme down there. And I like the idea of the quarterback getting out of the pocket uh, in that red zone. If you move the pocket with the quarterback, you put a lot of pressure on the corners uh, of the uh, defense. And in so doing, that gives you the option of being able uh, to either throw short to your running back or maybe get that corner route uh, in the back of the end zone. Coach, what about defensively? Uh, I, I would guess that you would, you would agree the defensive backfield certainly stepped up last week uh, by limiting the receivers of, of the Red Blacks to open open yardage, lots of um, you know lots of production, but having trouble stopping the quarterback running the ball. 
was a problem, and uh, you're going against another guy who who r- rushed the ball last week for, uh, I believe it was 11 times for 58 yards. Uh, what adjustments do you make defensively that will not affect your pass defense but still can protect against that quarterback run? Well, number one, uh, there's no telling uh, the defensive backs uh, that, that they can't cover down the field uh, and still come up and make a tackle. Now, they've got a big target. This Cornelius guy is a big guy, so they know what the target is there. To me, the whole idea is if you can continue to get that defense to come off the football and get up field, we had that five sacks last week, if you can get them to put the pressure on that uh, quarterback, then he's going to have to run. Now, the minute he breaks that line of scrimmage, you've got to get everybody and all hands on deck to go after him and get him down before he gets uh, into first down territory. Coach, uh, Bubba and I were discussing the offensive line and want to get your expertise on it. we got Tyrone Riley back in the lineup at left at his usual left tackle spot. Uh, what does he bring to this line? And, um, you know, with the, the different changes, what do you, what do you see? What do you, what do you see the result of that for this game? Well, you know, again, we're going uh, to change people again. You know, Sartor, uh, Sartor is out at that right tackle spot and Kemp moves into the right tackle. Riley comes off of, of injury and he goes into the left side tackle. Wood Manzi uh, came back the last game and played okay uh, at his right guard spot. I would hope that they would settle down and get a group that could stay together. Revenberg and Beard are the only two guys in that group uh, that stay together uh, game in and game out. And, and really the continuity in the offensive line is so important. You know, if, if you don't give up sacks in, in, uh, you, with your offensive line, you've got a great chance. You know, you go back to the CFL stats where, where teams being sacked uh, convert a TD at only 1% of the time after that sack. Well, well, those teams uh, who are not being sacked are successful 16% of the time scoring a TD. So pressure, pressure is the way to go. Folks, at every home game, we have a contest during Tiger Cats pregame presented by Greenworks. Our partners at Greenworks have ponied up some outstanding prizes for us to give away each game. From lawn mowers to chainsaws and snow throwers, a lucky listener will win one of these great Greenworks battery-powered tools. So, to be sure to listen closely to each Tiger Cats pregame presented by Greenworks leading into our home games for Greenworks Listen to Win Contest, good luck. Coach Al, you know, like Coach O will always say, you know, the focus will always remain on our team. But let me kind of switch this up a little bit. Uh, from your standpoint, and I know it's on the outside, what's been going on with this Elks team? I see some outstanding players. Well, the transition to the new head coach, uh, and the head coach being uh, the person he is, uh, there's a lot of changes. You know, we just talked about the changes we have to make uh, to bring – our group together. He's made numerous changes, some good, maybe some not so good. And when you start alternating quarterbacks uh, in your ball games, you know, uh, a quarterback starts looking over his shoulder. He doesn't understand, you know, I'm being pulled uh, because I made a bad throw uh, down the field. Now the other guy's in the game. Then next week, uh, he wants me to go back in. So I think a lot of the, uh, the adjustments that they have to make is to settle down and understand uh, what Coach Jones wants and and then to get their team together and keep them together. Coach, if you're looking at special teams here, are you happy with the performance so far this season? You know Mark Leggio is perfect so far in the kicking game, uh, but more more talking about punt return, kick return, kickoff return, and and kickoff. Um, What are your thoughts so far? after after four games well you know again you you hit it on the head you know legio is now nine for nine in field goals but uh you can't be kicking the ball out of bounds on a kickoff and you certainly don't want to be missing any extra points i I thought flowers uh, who led the team uh, last week in special team tackles now leads the cfl 
and special teams tackles. So there are some people there that can do the job. And, and I think the improvement that they have to make, for example, uh, two time count violations on special teams uh, last week, uh, that's not acceptable at all because you're going to, at some point, you're going to need that kicker to make that field goal, and, and you certainly don't want to back up five yards and have to do it again. There's been a number of penalties on special teams throughout the CFL this year, and Hamilton has certainly struggled um, in their in their own area and penalties uh, given up. Uh, as a coach, what do you how do you address that? Well, I think the emphasis uh, to me uh, is the way the officials are calling it. So as you look at the tape. You know, what you thought last year might be an acceptable block, this year is being called. Therefore, you have to make some adjustments uh, in your coaching style for those players, and you have to have those players understand, you know, that you can't do that this year. The, the officials are watching much more closely, uh, and therefore you're not going to get away with, with uh, a potential uh, illegal block. Coach, is there anything we haven't discussed that you're hoping to see tonight, a change or an adjustment that the Ticats will make from their previous games? Yeah, the, the one thing I really want to see, you know, and it came up last week in the Red Blacks game, uh, when Hamilton got the ball deep in their own end, there was only 2.05 left on the clock, and they had the lead. Now, when they needed to run that clock out, they couldn't do it. They gave the Red Blacks the ball back with 110 left on the clock. To me, uh, that could have been, you know, a deciding factor in the game if it weren't for uh, Thurman's tackle uh, on that quarterback scramble down there in, in the goal area. Uh, the Red Blacks potentially could have tied that ball game. So I would really like to see them be able to run the ball when the defense knows they're going to run the ball and run it successfully against that defense. You know, you, just sticking with the offense and not so much in the last minute of the game there, I found it amazing, and it really was kind of a quiet thing. That And you, you talked about ball distribution and seven different people touching the, the football on offense, but minus the quarterback. Tim White, who is, you know, arguably the game breaker for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, had one reception. Uh, Coach, can this team win on a consistent basis with your game breaker only having with that one reception? And I believe it was for seven yards. Well, you know, uh, that was an anomaly. That won't happen very often. Uh, Tim White is a great receiver, and he'll get his touches. But I really thought a lot, uh, you know, in my mind, I was going back to the idea we had when uh, Banks was doing so well uh, as a receiver. Sometimes you use that great receiver as a decoy and, and allow other people to catch the football. So if the defense is paying so much attention to White, which they were in the Red Blacks game, uh, you go to other people and, and you make your quarterback uh, go through his reads. Uh, and if White's available, fine. If not, hit that second guy, and that's why you got seven different receivers. Is that a credit to, to Matthew Schiltz, who, who all of a sudden, and I don't know what this, what this means to you, uh, I've been talking to people around the league and across the country, they're calling him a game manager. I'm always worry, weary about what that means, what a game manager means. Well, you know, yeah, I, I sometimes uh, use that phrase myself, and I, I caution myself against it because I don't like it. Uh, he's doing what he has to do to win the football game. I thought the way they adjusted their offense for the Red Blacks was what we were talking about, you and I and Andy, for for three weeks in a row, and that was to to have Schultz, when he's in the ball game, have his own package of what he's doing. He he is not the great drop back quarterback right now. If you move him out of the pocket, if you use that jet sweep, if you use some other uh, motions in the backfield, if you use tight ends on the line of scrimmage, if you use a fullback, he becomes a much better quarterback. And I thought we showed that in the last game. Coach, you mentioned one thing earlier when we were discussing team identity um, about only having two targets over 20 yards last week. And it seemed to... Uh, you seem to refer to that as a positive. Um, can you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, I, you know, I thought in the previous games 
we were going deep with the ball, especially on those uh, uh, second down situations, second and four, second and three uh, situations. We were trying to go deep with the ball uh, when it wasn't necessary. The fact that we were able to uh, convert those uh, short yardage gains uh, for first downs and allow the clock to, to stay in favor uh, of Hamilton, uh, I thought was a positive in the game. I am not saying we don't need to go vertical with the ball. We do. That, that is part of the CFL game, to go vertical with the ball. But if the defense is playing that zone and playing way back uh, in there and not allowing that, then you've got to go ahead and pick underneath uh, as many times as you can. And in the uh, 18 to 20 yard range is a great range, especially as you know, as a slot back. That's one of those uh, dig route areas where uh, uh, you can get your slots open. Coach, which player on the Tiger Cats or which players have you been most impressed with their improvement from week one to week four? Well, I don't know if I could say uh, by improvement. Uh, but to me, Thurman is a, is a great uh, football player. I think Edwards is showing uh, his ability to play the game. Uh, I, I think probably the most improved guy, and it, it's not an improvement because he's always done it, is Teddy Laurent. Teddy Laurent, when he's in the game, has become a game breaker. And, and on the offensive side, uh, Beard at center, to me, is really playing excellent football. Uh, in that position. So those are guys that I would point to as uh, uh, being not maybe dominant right now, but uh, certainly on the edge of being dominant. I love it, Coach. You're picking the meat and potatoes kind of guys, not the flashy guys like like Tasker and, and Fancy's over here. <laughs> oh, well, you know, those guys get all the accolades, but uh, the guys up front are the guys that the grunts are the guys who get the work done. Final one for us here, Coach. Um, you have used the term trap game in the past. Is that the situation tonight as we close out this conversation? No, I don't think so, Bob. I don't think this is a trap game at all. I think this is a game where the team has now learned that they have to improve each week. Uh, and as they improve, they will win more ball games. I think this is a game in which uh, you respect this opponent and you go into that uh, stadium with the idea that we're good enough to win, and we're going to show it. With his pregame salutations, he's Coach John Salavanis, and folks, he is a beauty. Coach Sal, appreciate your analysis. Certainly hope you get to enjoy this evening's game. Thank you, Bubba. Have a good night.